appropriate sample selection method. So again, with your risk, you have audit efficiency versus audit effectiveness. Sampling allows you to have efficiency, right, because you can't look at 100% of the items, but the trade-off is that you lose some level of effectiveness. So your effectiveness loss uh, is risk is that you over-rely, right? There's an over-reliance. In other words, you assess internal control risk as too low, right? What happens if you assess internal control risk is too low from the audit risk model? What's the connection? You assess internal control risk is too low. What is that going to do to your detection risk and your, substantive, your, your audit testing? Good thing the exam's not cumulative, huh? That means, right, you're, gonna, you're willing to accept, right? a greater risk that you won't find something. That's what basically happens, right? Because you've, if you assess internal control, you're, you're willing to accept that your audit procedures will not uncover a significant or material misstatement, right? Because if you assess internal control risk as low, what you're saying as an auditor is that I can rely on internal controls. And because I can rely on internal controls, I'm going to focus my testing more on tested controls and I'm going to reduce my substantive testing. Right? I'm basically saying the process works. So I don't have to look as, at as many transactions because the process works. I'm convinced that the process works. Right? So your risk in assessing it too low is that you could you know, um, not uncover a material misstatement. So you risk of incorrect acceptance. That's your risk. You risk, the, when you set your internal controls too low, you over rely on internal controls, you can accept that that sample, your results from your sample, is representative of the entire population, that there are no uh, material misstatements, right? So that's what we call an incorrect accept acceptance. Because you did not, by setting your internal controls that low, or too low, you have not looked at a number. You're going to reduce your sample size as a result of that. And what happens if you reduce your sample size? You increase your risk. In terms of your efficiency losses, it's the risk of under-reliance, which is the opposite. You assess internal control risk is too high. And you can see why that would lead to an efficiency loss, right? Because if you set internal control risk too high, so in other words, you say, uh, you know, I can't rely on internal controls, or I have concerns about internal controls. So as a result of that, I'm going to perform more testing. I'm going to look at more transactions. There's a cost to looking at more transactions. There's a cost of time and obviously a cost of money, right? So that makes your audit approach less efficient. That time that you're spending, you could be looking at other things that might be higher risk. So if you haven't set your internal, if you over rely, if you assess your control risk underlying internal controls, then you run the risk of incorrect rejection, right? So basically what you've done is that I can't rely on internal controls. And so therefore, you know, I'm going to 